Hey guys, I just finished editing this hour-long monstrosity, and uh, it's uh, even in the past six hours that it took to do it. It uh, it was quite the journey, and I I want to say before the <laughs> before the show begins that it was a pleasure to do it, all the hard work and all the stress and all the stuff, and I'm so I'm just I can't believe I've met. You guys, you guys have been so, like, crazy, crazy awesome. So I thank you for everything that you guys have done for me. And uh, I hope you guys en enjoy this show and look forward to seeing the future. Um, what is your opinion of this graduating year? I don't think it's publishable. No. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, let's see. The, the, third, the third year. Uh... Definitely uh, a, a great variety, like a Chinese buffet, all, all very memorable. You know, this is a year which came, and it came with, you know, a lot of people who came uh, under sufferance. A lot of people who came, and it wasn't what they wanted, uh, but they were here. And, and so we had quite a few people who, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you might call them, maybe a little bit of troublemakers. But you know what? Troublemakers make good people. And they make good historians. <laughs> and it's not been a surprise to me that we've had... Uh, it's been one of the richest years of people who are doing history concentrations. And doing them really well. Really? Because people who are asking the question why mm -hmm. are people who... If, those, if, they, if they're starting to get answers to those questions can become more complete human beings than people who just say, okay, this is what you told me to do, and this is what I'm going to do. And one of the great things about this year is a, it's a group of people who ask why, right? And sometimes a group of people maybe who ask, why not? <laughs> um, but uh, by asking why and consistently doing that, starting to realize that, you know, there are answers to that. And what starts as troublemakers ends up as searches. And, and, and so we get a generation of people who are, I think, emerging from their time elsewhere as adults and as bigger human beings than they would have been had they not been troublemakers. And certainly as historians, I think it's very much the case. A teacher can't help but have some sort of paternal, at least fraternal, big brother, father sort mm -hmm. of relationship with the students because we help form you and... But there's a mutual formation. So the way I look at the third year is just, the word that comes to mind most is loyal. Like they're very loyal to the school because they've been here three years. And to spend three years of your long, young life in Barry's Bay, a small college, a small number of students, comparatively speaking, requires a degree of, of, of you know, fidelity and faithfulness. And that, that is endearing. And so it's more like a relationship of friendship than it is a teaching thing. And that's the only way I can teach. I can't teach as a job. One of my enduring images, uh, it's not a story, but the enduring images is, is the, I don't know if it was dress a first year day or if it was, you know, everyone come in the fancy dress day during Spirit <laughs> Week in, in your first year. <laughs> and the array of uh, outfits was really striking a lot of uh, characters on display. Uh, and uh, and so you know those things they live with you and I think you know don't you may not I appreciate just <laughs> how often I still see that image when I see uh, see you guys gather together of all these people some with <laughs> green spandex completely covering their body or dressed as Dracula or whatever so so yeah so it's uh, it, it, I, it, and I think a lot of it's about people isn't it it's not about mm -hmm. uh, stories at least for me it's about you know the the story for me is the people who've 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 come. But some of the people who've gone have also taken advantage of what they, what they learned here. Um, uh, and, but it's the stories of the human beings. And I think there's, a, you know, there's some really great stories here. All right. Is it on now? Yeah, it is. All right, just look at... Uh, I'm going to be oh, right here. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> okay. You guys both know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to basically reminisce about what these three years have been like um as we're talking this basically i have like got a whole set of questions oh, okay. but i'm, I'm well i want yeah 
we are kind of, kind of but okay. I really want to roll with them. Okay. Really want to roll with uh, with how they're gonna how they're gonna turn out. <laughs> that's embarrassing. <laughs> well, we're started already, so. Oh boy. Okay. Well, that's okay. You can cut. Cheers. This back, right. I don't even know what we're talking about. Well, that's kind of the point, I'm actually. Of surprise. Test. All right. First question. What, when I say the word Olswa, what is the first thing that comes in your mind? Church. Olswa. <laughs> the letters. Oh gosh. I think I would say, pe like, people? Can we say a prayer first? <laughs> <laughs> That's a prayer. <laughs> what custom? Um, yeah, you know what, that actually brings actually up some memory. Can... Saying a prayer before everything. <laughs> yeah, before class, I think just God, the fact that it's so spiritual and so mm -hmm. Catholic. PDA rules. <laughs> uh, College, because it's not Olsu anymore. Mm. It's Olsu. Olsu. <laughs> or Olsu. Yeah. yeah. I just Olsu. correction. That's what pops in my head. Okay, what's correction. the first thing that pops into your head then? Ooh. The first concept. Mm. Saint Clair's Cafe in the winter time. A way of saying uh, Our Lady Seat of Wisdom without saying Our Lady Seat of Wisdom Academy, but also not saying SWC. Probably something along the lines of friends. Yeah. Because uh, I've made a lot of friends. Friends, social groups, parties, education, academics. That's five things, but okay. <laughs> I think they all come um, at once. <laughs> renaissance of humanities and the arts <laughs> and um, hope for our. A lot of smells in St. Joe's basement. <laughs> like, <laughs> like a lot of like. You know, kind of like. Oh, like janitor's like John's like, food. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stew. Like that. Yeah. Basically, the an image of like Saint Hedwig's Church for whatever reason. I don't know why. It's not part of campus, but that's like the first thing that literally comes into my mind. The cloister. <laughs> cloister. Yeah. I was gonna say like we say also I think homeschooler. That's the first word that comes into my mind. <laughs> I think that's oh no! <laughs> definitely one of the biggest things that kind of defines it, because if anything, you get the whole homeschooling culture yeah. to the school. And, you know, even if you're not homeschooled, you kind of it rubs off on you. Waking up too early after a crazy night, and having to go to classes, and then having Mr. Shinken be like, "Oh, Emily, you were in the drink again." <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, and then Mr. Mina and Dr. Shaw always. Mm -hmm. He always knew. He always knew. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, definitely Mr. Mina. Yeah. You can't have old school without Mr. Mina. That's true. Mr. Mina. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing? Uh, good friends. Yeah. Mr. Mina. Mr. Mina, why? Because he's literally the face of old school. <laughs> Go on the Min website and you see Mr. Meenan. It's true. It's true. Oh, Scotland wants me to sing me well. Like Johnson Lucas. But if you wish a grateful prayer, give it a hand! So we'll get some spruce. We can have a little taste of haggis.
Rick, that was awesome. Joey, right here. Can I see it? And he walked out. <laughs> so okay, so when you when you arrived in first year, like, what was your first thought? What first popped into your head? When I arrived, I thought it was really weird. <laughs> I thought everyone was really weird too. The people were weird. First impressions of the school was it was big change. It was a very big change. So like, yeah, it was, it was big change for me, just coming from a big city and then coming very big mm -hmm. and then a desert. Yeah, I was like, oh no. I thought it was gonna be horrible. But... Oh, I loved it. Like the bus ride when everyone was playing music, I absolutely fell in love with it right then. Oh. Well, okay, actually what I first thought about Ulsa, my first association in my mind was homeschool. Hey, same. And I was like, <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> I was like, if homeschoolers come here, because I looked at the um, promotional materials, and I saw like homemade jumpers and jean skirts, and I was like, just, just my element. I had the opposite reaction to that. I can do I this. <laughs> Great. Leander was excited. You were oh, like, yeah, I know these people are gonna be wonderful. They're gonna be good. <laughs> um, well, I was expecting, you know, a super homeschooler kind of like college where, <laughs> you know, girls be wearing long skirts and guys be wearing college shirts and sandals and to be super nice with each other and, you know, not swear or anything like that. And then after orientation weekend, it was just a completely different. Uh, it's definitely a different type of place than I was <laughs> expecting. <laughs> uh, I thought that everyone else thought I was an alcoholic but the first night I got here. Oh my goodness, that was a good weekend. Because I, we, we were drinking at Joel's and I kind of knew Joel a little bit and then everyone came down the street from our year. And I, <laughs> and I was already like six in at that point. And I, <laughs> I, think, I was like, I was singing the selfie song with Cece Lamb, and, <laughs> and I think Amelia Willis <laughs> and Matt DeMong <laughs> were like, <laughs> we gotta slow down a little bit, but then they started drinking. Yeah, that first weekend, orientation weekend at Joel's, that was like probably the best weekend. Now you, that, <gasps> you can't just throw that statement around like, the best weekend at all, so I was the first, when I didn't know anyone, it was the best weekend. Yeah, no kidding. It's true. Uh, very different. When I first got here, um, I thought I'd made a really strange mistake. Because uh, I didn't know what I was doing at all. I was planning on going into, um, into the University of Victoria to study violin. And it was only because I got tendinitis the fall before that I hadn't been able to audition and had to put all that on hold. And I rounded the corner in the driveway that leads towards St. Hedwig's and Ulswa. And I see a couple buildings and I thought, okay, this makes sense if they're like administrative buildings or something. So I asked him, so where's the university campus? And he just looks at me and starts laughing. He's like, this is the university campus. And I looked at the span of it. It's like, my, I, look, I can look around and see the world for like this. It also takes up that much of, the, of what I can see. It's yeah. Like, I made a mistake. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I I think I cried. Oh no. <laughs> I, I was like, uh. Just you missed your mom. It smelled weird. Yeah, no, because the girls in my house were being awful. That's why. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> did you have milk? Did you have tea? What? Um, yeah, I did. Yeah, it's coffee. I was excited to meet Eden Linton. That was fun. Wait. I, I skipped orientation because Monica was like, don't go, it's awful. And so it I was, was like, so awful. okay, I will skip it. And so uh, a couple days, I guess it was like the day before classes began, Monica and Arnold came and picked me up. And I just remember like the whole time, like I was so nervous, but I was like overcompensating for that. So I was like criticizing Arnold. <laughs> I was like, you drive like a grandpa. I was like, I don't even know who this man is. <laughs> And then we got here, and I was just like, okay, like, I can do this. And when we were, like, pulling up to Peter's, my house, in the first year, oh, yeah. it's like, Mercedes and <laughs> Beth Woodard <laughs> were there, and they were just, like, walking out, and they just, 
They looked like they wanted nothing to do with me. Absolutely nothing. They're just like lighting their cigarettes and I was like, what is this place? <laughs> and I was just so confused. I was like, Monka talks about prayer, but like <laughs> There's some yeah. people just smoking. We definitely did not look like we had any of that they looked, going on. Yeah. <laughs> they looked like like I was like gum on the bottom of their shoe and I was just like, this place is gonna be awful. <laughs> I just I felt very much like I belong here. Like I remember just going to class and I was like, this is just it feels so right. Gotta get the angle. Yep. Yeah, I'm videotaping. You good? You're good. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Take me back to first year. Um, yeah. What was it like for you guys? Like when you first, it first came? Crazy. Yes. For, first came, the entire yeah, experience though. Yeah. Yeah. Entire I experience. don't remember much of it. I probably Are you serious? Remember. Oh, I do. I remember Monica, I remember time. talking about medical topics. We always talked about, because you... Wait, her? Oh, this Monica? Yeah. Cause you. Oh, that's right. Cause you had your nursing experience. Oh, yep. We talked about that. I remember. Well, I was at. I was at my house a lot. It was just so fun. I just remember having so much fun, and I just like I went on all the trips and did all the fun stuff and was part of the play, was part of school. But I probably really slacked off. Like I did slack off in my schoolwork, and I had no idea what I was doing. So if you could score. do it again, would you apply yourself more to Oh, school? yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I missed out so much of good <laughs> stuff. I probably... I was like... <laughs> I, mean, I probably did what? a lot of... Yeah, like... Oh, my goodness. Like, history? I just did not pay attention enough in mm -hmm. history, I right know. And in a lot of classes. First year was very hard. It was, like, one of the greatest things that could have ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. But it was hard. Mm -hmm. And it, like... I had to learn myself a thing or two, you know? Like, I had to go through sure. some major, like, ups and some major downs, and I had to, like, have a lot of, like, stupid moments <laughs> to, like, really, I think, <clears throat> get to where I am now. I was so young. I was very young. Yeah. I'm not even, like, <laughs> talked a lot about this with Chris, but it's not just, like, uh, not even just like, like it wasn't that much younger actually, but just I feel like I've matured so much since mm -hmm. like the first day I came up here. So <clears throat> really like, just my priorities even, like things that I'm expecting from the school, things that the school can, I know I can take from the school. I came up here with very little expectations, but it was just like, I'm here and whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to do it. And um, now, yeah, I just... I know how to all swap. <laughs> you know, to say, like it just, yeah. So, but first year was, first year was a big step for me, and it was, uh, it was very good. It was like I would never, I wouldn't change it for anything. Um, Here's a question: What were you guys like in first year? Oh, I was a total bitch. I would have hated me actually. I would have shot me if I saw myself <laughs> now. Then I would have shot me. Uh, <laughs> me and so when, <laughs> when you yell at me for not liking you in first year, <laughs> but then you say, so are you agreeing with me? Or, yeah, don't don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Me and he didn't get along in first year. Right? Along? I don't we just, think so. Like, I didn't really. I love <laughs> in your opinion. Uh, the kid outside Tim Hortons who's smoking and swearing way too loudly. Because he hasn't done anything with his life yet. That's what I'm... Well, look how what far I'm, you've come. Come very far. <laughs> <laughs> it's so demeaning. I guess it was just like a lot of first she was just like maturing and then like growing and forming who you are as a person. Um, like throughout all the years, but especially in first year whenever you like have that newfound freedom of not being like under your parents' wing anymore. I think we like thought that. we could do anything. I think we... 
Like, especially the all-nighters, we were like, um, Oh, yeah, we thought we were so, like, well, you guys, we're like, you now, guys thought you were so rebellious staying up. Like, I just went to bed, I'm like, guys, it's like 12, it's not that big of a deal. We're just like, no, this is our first, like, taste of freedom to do whatever we want. So we're going to stay up all night. And then, um, so we pulled, like, this communal community. house, or all-nighters. Our whole house. I don't think I ever did that with you guys. I was the only one who went to bed. I think we could kind of say the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Like, we all kind of really... We're in our little shell. Yeah, very tentative. And, yeah. I'm sure. A little subconscious. Mm-hmm. I was a drunk for a lot of it. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, first year is so incredibly different. Mm -hmm. Like, like I was a completely different person. I came in being like, you know, like, obviously I was homeschooled. I was like going like everything was like changing and shifting and stuff I was trying to like be like oh yeah I'll get accepted like I don't really know what I'm doing or anything but there's this element of like like you're you but you're also like I want to be cool <laughs> like, I don't want to put in like no one else I don't know it seems much more of a, a hopeful and less jaded youth mm -hmm. back then <laughs> <laughs> all right so going on to a different track um what is your worst exam or essay story? Yeah, oh, that happened right. this year? <laughs> yeah, this happened yesterday. Yes. Okay, you go first. Um, I slept through one of my exams. Oh, I... Okay. Um... Yeah, it's just like... <laughs> you said I didn't want to go there. <laughs> Great yeah, story. Yeah, what's really good? Yeah. Okay, it's gone. No, what happened? Well, I first off lost the um, sheet that I was supposed to study for an exam, and so it's independent studies. So I lost that, and I was calling Dr. Beresford to try to figure it out, but I didn't contact him in time, so I talked to his mom on the phone for a while, <laughs> and apparently she told me that I need to see him for 9 o'clock yesterday morning, so on Friday, and I didn't know that, so I just I just kept on sleeping. And so Paulina came in like at like 10 something, telling me that Mr. Beresford was looking for me, and so I had to go, and we, I talked to him, I missed my exam and all that, and so we had to figure out working out another thing. The day before the theory, I had written zero words, and then I spent all of, um, let's see, I spent all of that day, and then into the night around 5 a.m., just writing nonstop, because so I went from, like, zero words to, like, 3,600 <laughs> or something like that. Real quick. <laughs> We'd finished like four final exams and we were getting ready for CDOC. We actually hadn't gotten ready for it yet. <laughs> I have a And then, um, so we were exhausted. And so we're like, let's just go to bed. We'll wake up at like four or five in the morning and start studying for the exam. I think we looked over the notes like once. Anyways, we went to bed and we slept through our alarms. We all had alarms set and everything. And I woke up, what? Can I the rest of those? Or? Not yet. I woke up. To my mom calling like half an hour before the exam to wish me luck, and I was like, <laughs> and so we ran out of it. Like it was like mad chaos. We hadn't studied. We prayed. We went to the chapel and prayed before because that's all we could do. Prayer. And then we yeah. did the exam, and it was actually okay. I mean, I didn't do, I didn't do well, but I passed. We I both passed. And like afterwards, we like ran back, and as I was like running down the path, I couldn't stop. And like halfway through, I just like started sobbing because I was so happy <laughs> that it went okay. So I take twenty minute shifts from quiz questions to gobbets, read them all over, do twenty minutes of source reading, and then do twenty minutes of of book reading. And it was three four in the morning, four in the morning or three thirty something about that. And my nose actually started to bleed. <laughs> And I, I saw, it's I didn't really even funny. notice it, except I looked in the, in the <laughs> reflection of the computer, and it was like a blood had like gone down, and it was here, and I was like, <coughs> I was Hit like, all time low. yeah, I just went to bed, I was so stressed out, I went to bed. So in first year, when we had our uh, first history, <laughs> why was Socrates killed? <laughs> <laughs> like most of our houses, for some reason we Everybody's were all doing the same, the same essay question. Pretty yeah. much the whole first year class did that question, let's be yeah. real here. I looked over my notes briefly and then I went to bed and I dreamed that I studied. So I woke up super confident, I'm like, oh. I nailed this. <laughs> and then I was like, <laughs> like, like Monica Seifer was my roommate, she was um, testing me a couple questions and I got them right. And I was like, but I totally won it. <laughs> and then, <laughs> 
I, I got like a 30 something on that test. It was horrible. Yeah. But I like was so calm from like crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the worst exam story would be ethics, uh, second year. Final or? The final. The final. Oh, with Hunter? Hunter. Oh, man. Correct. I loved ethics, though. I had a great time. I wrote, I don't know what I wrote, don't remember any of the questions. Probably yeah. why I did so bad. <laughs> I just went in there and I remember oh, the man. only thing that he, like, Drew attention like the, the thing he did he gave me I got a D minus I think on that or D plus. No oh, awesome. D plus so. D plus across. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was worth fifty percent of the grade, <laughs> and it was uh, uh, all he he didn't write a single thing, but all he did was underline one sentence and it was the first sentence and it was not actually a sentence. It was just there was no. <laughs> it was just like. <laughs> Like a dangling participle, but like nothing. Yeah. Like it was all. <laughs> there was no subject. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> it was was just no words. Subject. The worst thing I did in class was take the class, which was ethics in second year. <laughs> and Whoa, I hated harsh. it because I don't. I only learned what the word contingent meant in a different context than how you would normally use it. All of my essays and exams have been pretty. You know, pretty chill. But mm -hmm. I think one of my worst sort of academic memories up here was it would have to be that first year group project, man. Mm -hmm. That was horrible. Yeah. I don't know, it's kind of a hilarious story. You know? um, basically, me and a couple <coughs> other people, though, like, we weren't really happy with the grades and stuff. Are you guys gonna move or anything? Yeah, a couple of people. Gonna... <laughs> so we actually thought it'd be a great idea at the time to go confront Dr. Shaw about it and. <laughs> Essentially, mug him. <laughs> Yeah, you know, just for grades. shank the good grades out of them, right? But <laughs> I don't know. I've never, I've never felt more. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> you play a dangerous game. I've never felt like more patronized and beetle, belittled in oh, anyone's no. presence than in Doctor Shaw's, because he he straight up just kind of like chuckled and laughed at us. Like he couldn't believe that you know three students would. You know, confront him about his green scheme. Like, it was totally unheard of, so. Where did you find these things? Where did you find these things? Oh, God. You can't do it. I'm sorry. I guess that's all of it. You used to call it Kippa Bitch. Shit. You used to call it Kippa Bitch. Any pass. 19th to the 24th. F***. But yeah, no. It was a really good experience for me, though, overall. I loved it, too. But second year was my favorite year of all. What was important to you in second year? I don't know. I just, I don't know. I got ex like a lot closer with a bunch of people. And... Second year, uh, I think it was basically meeting the deadlines of every paper that I had to hand in. But also, um, I actually would say more importantly in second year was bonding with my first year class. Because I remember in first year, um, we didn't really, I didn't really bond a lot with like a lot of people in my class per se. And in mm -hmm. second year, I always remember like the reason why I like second year so much because we all would hang out in the same spot, you know, upstairs in St. Joe's. We all be studying up here, like we all be talking. Yeah. And to me, that was very important to me, just like just hanging out with just my class. And I, like and through that, I got to know people a lot better than I did in first year. Maintaining the relationships I made in first year. That was uh, important to me, mm. and uh, just really. Yeah, because, I don't know, I think a big part of the school life um, is the friendships that you make up here and uh, the social aspect. That's going to be the thing that probably remains with you the most, which is kind of sad. I, think, mm -hmm. I mean, sad, but, like, ha like to think that you come up, you can come here and pay for an education, but the thing that, you, that really sticks with you the most is the, the social aspect. Uh, I think that's definitely true. Like friends I've made up here. It's probably going to be yeah, yeah. friendships for life. Exactly. Um, yeah. it's putting more effort into the friendships that you know um, are more important to you because you can't be friends with everybody. So you really have to um, kind of choose, but it's more its more of like a, I don't want to say discern because I know that's kind of a trigger. But um, <laughs> you think about it more and you think about how much effort you want to put into something. Um, so I think developing friendships was m one of the most important things. And also for me, the academics, I just did really 
well last year and I just really loved all my classes and I loved to learn everything that we were learning. Um, mm -hmm. So that was really great. And I think what I really learned in second year was the importance of actually giving God time to work. And I think it'll just sound cliche because so many people have said it, but uh, that it really is important to give God the time that he needs and to trust that he'll give you the time you need later. Realizing where my responsibility lay and um, putting my time more into that. Mm -hmm. And like that requires sacrifice and stuff and I felt like I could have sacrificed more. Um, so, Fair. Yeah. Fair. I think, like a, uh, oh, for me it's probably having fun and getting out more. The opposite of you. <laughs> because there's it's just fun. better opportunity. It was like a soap opera, I guess, in some years. ways. Second year was dramatic, and I think part of that was being Lady Macbeth. <laughs> we not Lady Macbeth. <laughs> but I we didn't like share it. that experience, but I think that made my year dramatic. And, um, and also really fun. That was probably my favorite part of... Second year was probably the most important year of my life. Well, I figured out more where my interests lie. Um, and after some, some very tough times in second year, I mm -hmm. managed to uh, make it through those tough times and managed to come out as a better person. It was the most important year of my life, but it was also probably the most painful one. Mm, so there's this thing called the second year syndrome, where it's like you've been to the school for a year, and I think we all have you got, it. I did not get it. <laughs> you got it. Hardcore. And it's basically like you've been here for a year and you feel and like you, think you're you own the place. The this is my school. Get the f*** out of my halls. And I swear like an <laughs> And you hate the first years. And I didn't necessarily hate them individually as people, but I was a little bit of a jerk to everybody. And of course this year that's completely different. No, it's <laughs> no. still the same. I hate everyone. She doesn't voice her opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I love everybody. We're all God's children. Yeah, we're God's children. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Second year was big for me because uh, I didn't think I was coming back for the second year. Yeah. Until right. after first year when I actually graduated. I can tell y'all I scraped by with a 65 <laughs> over a 63 bar. <laughs> so I was pulling hairs out of my head at the end of that year and I've never been happier in my life than when I graduated and except for when I'm going to graduate third year I will be happier then I'm going to be so I'm very happy then but yeah uh, going into second year I was like all right yeah next question <laughs> oh well thank goodness uh I'm skipping 17 to ask you are there any things you did that were against school rules you'd like to admit to <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we've admitted to like one of them. Any oh, other okay. like blatant okay. ones, really good story. But like honestly, <laughs> it wasn't the only time that we smoked in the house. Seriously, the, bus. the balcony was like our regular <laughs> in spot. St. Peter's. <laughs> we just open the door and lock the lock the door. People would come in. Cause you could always hear because it was electronic, so it's not like yeah. robot. And then you like pitch your cigarette and have this air freshener. And yeah. Like, oh. So we just sit there, <laughs> stand there outside, yeah. and just like be smoking out the. <laughs> Upstairs. Yeah, the best one though, it was so funny. Okay, so I had a bottle of wine and I really just wanted to have a nice glass of wine this one day because I was super stressed. So then it was either Beth and I or Emily and I, but I walked upstairs and I was like, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna have a glass of wine here. But then people decided to come in the door, so then I freaked out. I was like, how do I, how do I hide this? So then I got my blueberry, um, like frozen blueberries out of the freezer. <laughs> and I used Amelia's Vitamix blender. It was probably the worst mistake of my life because she wanted to murder me in that moment. Yeah. But so I put the wine in and the blueberries. I was like, well, if it's all purple, no one's gonna know. <laughs> and then so I just had this like 
over 50% wine smoothie. And then Beth and I, and like, I don't know, I don't, were you there? You gave me a sip. Yeah, we're like, just like, okay. just sitting on the couch, just everyone in our like little house meeting, I think it was. Mm -hmm. We were just sitting there, just like sipping back our wine, and Lexi was like, oh, what do you drink? I was like, oh, I just made a smoothie. It's, it's a new experiment. I haven't really done this before. She's like, oh, that's so nice. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Then just gave it to Emily, and the look on her face, I was like, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> done so many things that Too many things. I should probably not say on camera, yeah. but I'm going to. You know, besides beyond the few minor infractions of going out of dress code at parties and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, shocking, shocking. I know. Yeah. You should uh, put that on the video. I had a couple of drinks in my room. A couple. Does missing chore count? No. no. <laughs> Do you know how many fights I have for missing this? I know how much chore. Oh, <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, uh, well, there's one first year, me and... Oh, should I name drop? You guys sat on the roof. I was I don't in the house the crying. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I don't remember sitting on the roof. There were a lot of rules broken. In St. Anthony's, and it was last year, and uh, Miss DeSaley comes in, and she's like, oh, what are you guys watching? And we're like, oh, 22 Jump Street. And she's like, oh, okay. So she goes upstairs, like five minutes later, she comes down, she's like, um, can I talk to you for a minute? And I was like, uh, sure. <laughs> and she's like, so I just realized what that movie was, and uh, sure, you're not allowed to watch it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah. Um, Oh, it was right before our bio presentations, and me and Elise were working on them, and we were like, and this was second year, and we were like, okay, we need the internet, and we had the music room back then, and it was so bright in there, mm -hmm. and we were like, why don't we just sleep over in the school? <laughs> Did you actually? So we ran back to our houses, and we were like, oh, we're just nice. gonna stay out. <laughs> George, <laughs> stop. And we grabbed, like, a couple blankets and clothes. And so, yeah, we camped out in what is now Miss Tifa's office, but used to be the music room where nobody ever went. And we took, like, our, like, blankets and we, like, snuggled and then, like, <laughs> we had, like, chips and, you know, we were, like, typing on our laptops in the dark and just, like, so trying sketchy. to be, like, super <laughs> quiet so that nobody would know we were still in the school because you know how, like, the janitor, like, checks all the rooms before she goes? Well, she didn't check that one, so... <laughs> the next question. It's two, it's two years ago. <laughs> All right, next, moving on. <laughs> All right, um, for a second, now third year. Uh, what What is different from the pre previous two years? What is different? What is different? I know what's important. I think I've, uh, yeah, I've definitely grown so much, like, even from, like, last year. Like, it was almost like, I didn't know it was important until I didn't have it anymore. Just the fact that like my close friends are just kind of more dispersed, and mm. and so that's really like allowed me to get to know other people. A lot more. I think it was like a more settled down second year, like a more like mature, like definitely um like low key, a little more under the radar. Yeah. Because all the first years don't really, I mean like they sort of care, but who you are, but it's like you're not like you're not like on top anymore. You're just kind of like... You're not on top of your chance. You're not your chance. <laughs> you're like... Uh, I don't know. I always feel on top of it. <laughs> I'm on top. <laughs> but it's okay. You don't really want to be. You want to just sort of sit down and do your schoolwork finally. Also, um, it's really cool seeing how other people have changed. Yeah. Like, you can just see it from first year to third year. Yeah. And like that's yeah, really I, cool. Yeah. 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 I like, remember... People rarely are what you think they are. I remember in first year seeing you guys, and I was like, oh, they're so immature. And then Monica, let, she was talking to me, and she's like, you look at Joel and Jacob Morris, they're just like, they were like that in first year. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I'm like, okay. And no, you guys have all grown up so much in the girl. Like, <laughs> it's actually wild how much everyone's changed, yeah. though. <laughs> Only three years. I'm, I'm off campus this year, so that was a new yeah. experience. Oh, we're off campus. Which, yeah, that's big. That's big. Huge. You feel a big difference. Actually, I felt like this year is just very different from the last two years. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, even in the feel of the whole You're school. You're more separate from the school, in a way. Yeah. But that's you true. can choose not to be... Well, course. to a degree. I think there's always just kind of a... I mean, you don't have first years in your house. Well, yeah. obviously. Mm -hmm. 
or second years. So the people who are in your house, you know really well. And uh, what weird things have you guys done to, just to entertain yourself? Oh my <laughs> gosh. I oh. cut down some trees. And that was out of anger. And besides the Christmas one. And besides the Christmas tree, I cut down <laughs> three trees. Two trees. <clears throat> With kitchen knives. This is weird. What? It takes a long time. I don't recommend it. Was it so Unless you really... No! That's I, why. I hacked it. I hacked for about 40 minutes. Like a 20 foot tall tree. <laughs> Wait, what? People are weird. I would walk in the middle of the street at night. Like in the um, yellow line, hmm. all the way home every night. <laughs> yeah. And then if there was a car, I would like wait till like, if, like they were like close enough that I could get hit, but then I'd like, run off the street and then I'd go back into the middle of the road just because it felt empowering. Just do like little muscle spasms or whatever, or, just, or like throw your pen across. It's kind of stupid, but anyways, I like <laughs> had my hand up for a really long time waiting, and Huey was like watching. And... And finally, Doctor Lamb got to her. She was sh <laughs> like spaz and took it down. And went, she, Dr. Lamb was like, just kind of shocked. Like, I, I, don't, I think she questioned reality. <laughs> I love stopping underneath, uh, what is it called? That light? The street light. When it's snowing at night and you mm -hmm. feel like you're in a snow globe. It's just, it's so, like, you're in a fairy tale. Yeah, it's, I, I love it. like there's a little bit of magic there. Yeah. And okay. it's yeah. like... We can all agree on that? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Walk, walking out onto the lake was kind of fun. I did that yeah. for the first time this year. When we built the lean to at the end of the year. Oh, you did? Yeah. I wasn't there for that. Really? I, mean, that was I made an igloo. <laughs> They're just building things. We made at the end of exams last year, we made that lean to thing up in oh the cover. It took an afternoon. It was pouring rain. We had like garbage bags and tree. Branches a lot of beer. and stuff. Oh, and it was just great. And it was like pizza. W it looked like something a homeless man would make. Oh, I know one of the things. It was a lot of fun. Was it was the end of the year last year, and we were all like dragging trees from like left, right, and center to build that little hut that was oh, up yeah. on the bonfire hill. And it's like that's kind of weird because I mean, it didn't really serve like a greater end type purpose, you know. But it was like it was just like a lot of fun, and it was just. I don't know, bonding amongst people. Yeah, I don't know. I've had some people do some pretty freaky things, though. Moment of truth. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're such a freak. <laughs> <laughs> Sliding on pizza boxes. 
Patrick, no. Oh my gosh. You're asking me to give up my client a five year for a G5. Yes. G5 airplane. Yes. And lots of money. Player. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Liberty Roll. Rub it up, down, rub it I need this scarf. This is Jenny, my weapon. Turn that off. No, someone no. said go. But what, in your in your opinion, is the worst aspect of the school? Oh, um, not necessarily something substantial to the school itself, but even accidental to the school. Um, the winter. Mm. It's beautiful and it's horrible. I like the winter. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> this is the meat. This is how. We, this yeah. is where. This is why I agreed to do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the gossip goes. So that makes sense. Um. If not winter. I think it's. Mm -hmm. People who think that just because they're Catholic, they don't do anything wrong, and they mm -hmm. they have a lot of pride, and so they don't address issues that are in their lives, and they don't acknowledge the fact that they're wrong sometimes just because they're Catholic. They kind of hide behind it. So okay, when I when I say minimal level of morality, I'm saying compare. I'm not comparing it to the bottom. I'm comparing it to the standard. Uh, the Christian standard. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not not Christian perfection, but what the Christian standard should be compared to that is very minimal. Uh, compared to the secular standard, it's worlds apart, because the secular yeah. standard is just so absent. Yeah. And it's just it's so like there's there's like almost no floor to it. Whereas with around here there is a floor, and but like, I mean I could go into great detail about what I think about that, but. Nonetheless, what I mean is, is that it's less, the moral standards around here are less than what a true Christian should be living up, but they're way higher 
than secular standards. Like, even though it tries to open up people up to certain thoughts, like within contemporary philosophy, showing us what, you know, um, modern philosophers think and things like that, there's always an attitude and a tendency towards the classical, the traditional, and the conservative that I don't think is always no. good and open to creativity or to just, like, I think we need more, a little bit more liberality of thought. It forces you to do all these things together and you know if you're not down with it then they if they find you actually a lot of the times for it you know like if you don't go to any to some of their talks and stuff you know you can expect a bill in your mail you know to kind of force this this culture to come together yeah i think kind of like i'll build on that it's not even it does it's not always just like that they're promoting a quote-unquote catholic culture but it's just a very specific type of Catholic culture that it is. Mm. So it's not... Yeah, like, what is a Catholic culture? Yeah, it's hard to define a Catholic culture, but it's it's their Catholic culture. I've been getting, I'm not sure if a lot of people have experienced this, but I've been getting, like, a lot of pressure to, like, kind of, like, participate in the spiritual aspect of the school. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's like, you can't really force someone to pray. You know, it's kind of just, like, people pray on their own time, right? So it's kind of just like the whole enforced, you know, Monday mandatory mass, or like, you know, they, you'll get in trouble for not attending mass, or just like, you know, when you're sitting down and people are going out for divine mercy, and everyone's like, hey, you should come out for divine mercy, it'd be good for you. Yeah. And it's just like, I will pray on my own time. Like, you know, I can't let other people tell me when to pray. That's for me to decide, and I'm the one that's in control of that. There's not... It's the worst and the best. You hate it and you love it. Because going into it, and, and, and you're always going into it, but going into it you are forced to, to, to create. There's not enough art and, I don't know, like, okay, it's yeah. a liberal arts school, but so, like, it's going to be focused on the academics, but I think, I think just the fact that everyone's so focused on grades and numbers and... Okay, maybe that's not the worst aspect, but I really don't like it. And yeah, like I want to work well, but and like I want to get good grades, but it's not to be enough. Like, it's not to be all in all. Yeah, exactly. I think right? it, yeah, it becomes the focus. Yeah. Um, like you won't do anything else because I need to study. A love of the inappropriate, mm -hmm. and I think that's also very much a human thing that humans do. Quite frankly, I do it. And especially last semester, I think I was arguably the worst in my house for doing it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I, I, I do tend that way a lot. And I think that is a, a big distraction. Ooh, that's a hard one. I would say the gossiping. Oh, I kind of like the gossiping. I know you're <laughs> Um... Yeah, actually, that is probably the worst part. It's because it's the best part, but the worst part. Yeah. Describe bowls with gossip for me. Um, it's just like, I don't know. There's like not a whole lot to do other than like, you know, like, I mean, you can find things to do going up on the hill, but then you're usually drinking, like going seeing a friend, but then you're usually drinking, you know? So when you're not drinking, you're gossiping. And it's just really easy to gossip because it's not like you're sitting there like, I don't think it's gossip in the true sense because you're not like trying to like rip on people. Ugh, I, I hate it. <laughs> I'm actually terrible at it. Like, I don't hear anything. Okay, yeah. I, I don't so participate. I, I don't hear anything. I'm like, it's like, so, oh, so so-and-so is dating who? I'm like, oh, when did that happen? Three months ago. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. actually am usually out of the loop, but then when I'm, like... I'm, I don't even know where the loop is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just so frustrating, I find. Like, because it's such a small place, and you really can't... Like, word spreads so quickly, and it doesn't matter if you, like, go behind a bookshelf and, like, talk, because people can hear you anywhere. Uh, um, that's why I enjoyed this year. I wasn't involved in it. Really? Yeah. yeah, gossip's generally never a good gossip's thing. Gossip's generally a vice. Yeah. I can't think of a time when it's not a vice. Right. 
And uh, gossip and this school go together like a beer in a dark. Because it's also, it's the fact that a lot of people don't realize they're gossiping. And it's not until someone says, um, I don't think you should be saying that, then they stop and think what it is they're saying. Mm -hmm. um, but the things that a lot of people don't say, you shouldn't be talking about that. Or that's someone's personal business. I don't gossip, do you think? <laughs> Uh oh. Okay. Here's the deal. <laughs> okay. It's so usually... actually, I heard. It just... <laughs> it's usually incorrect. It's usually comical because how incorrect it is. And then whenever the person hears the go the gossip that's about them, usually doesn't even freak out that much because it's so incorrect that it, there's no way it can be true. <laughs> I don't even know if you can call it gossip because everybody knows it. Yeah, it's like it's, it's true, <laughs> and usually it's true. It's, it's like usually it's just word gets out. Yeah, word gets out fast. It's all about couples and possible couples, matchmaking. And you, you always send a test, like a test comment first, mm -hmm. like a, hey, I'm gonna make something up that's crazy but sounds plausible, and you tell the person, mm -hmm. and then we get spread around. You know, okay, you're the. Did no, you do that? Sorry. Oh, With what? Is that oh. Okay, I know this is a little sneaky, but I do it sometimes. Where you got some fake news that nobody else knows, and you're just like, you gotta drop the worst. this into some you're ears. The worst. So you whisper it into some select few ears, and you we watch and see how quickly it travels. So you know who to trust or not. <laughs> Alright, hold on, we gotta move on. Describe your party experiences. I don't remember. Sweet. Sweet. It was so good. Best, best memory I have, and it I I like this one because I'm full of myself, but it was I turned 19, mm. and Dr. Shaw shook my hand. No, he <laughs> 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 was huge. He looked at me in the eye. No, uh, uh, my 19th birthday party. It was the the Cecilia's yeah. house party that night. So oh good. God. I enjoyed Lit. that party. I yeah. There were so many people. Yeah. So I drank one of these. Uh, at about three, four in the afternoon. JD drank. Uh, he chugged a beer. Yes. Him, and then he almost like threw it up. The out. skunky one. Not. What's that skunky yeah, kind? No, I didn't. Uh, Stella's. No, no. Oh, it was a. It was, it was a moose head. Moose head. Yeah. Moosehead. No, moose head got way better. It used to be gross nut, babe. But uh, my 19th birthday party was one of the better, better, better parties I've been up to. There was a lot of it. There was a lot of partying. A lot of partying. First year, off campus house. It was like all the time yeah. and then when there wasn't one there it was like get to the hill um so there was a lot of partying and then second year there was no off-campus house and so partying became sneakier Having been here and like when there were off-campus people to host parties, it was like, yeah, I want to be able to do that for people. And at first it was a lot of fun. It was like, welcome to my home. 
get crazy, get crunk. It's only one night of the year, baby. You know, <laughs> except but... it's not one year. <laughs> but it's like all the time. Parties are Our parties are really suck. Last right to the camera. See, I liked last year's. I like some of them were fun. Some of them last year mm. were fun. Well, because they needed to be. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. People made yeah. them fun. And some of them in first year were fun. Like I remember really liking Anne's. But um, we have the basement. And Cecilia's. Oh yeah, yeah. Cecilia. The Cecilia's. The, Cecilia. the parties at the Cummins Sears are always entertaining. Yeah. But anyway, um, and then yeah, off on campus this year, it's it, it's pretty, it's pretty similar to I think first year. I mean, no, it's even lame, what? lamer this year. There's, There's like, like no, no part, no house yeah. parties. No, I don't know. I was talking about off campus. Sorry, I was talking oh. about off campus. Oh my gosh, olive oil. Talk about that. I like that. That wasn't a fun party. That was, that I got made fun of for party. years about that. I don't so mind because I like the tried story. To shoot olive oil. I wasn't gonna uh, drink it. You were going to. You, did, you thought it was I olive had oil. it in my hand because I thought it was. Uh, you would have drank it. Like bushmills or something like that. I think you would have. I may or may not. If someone, if someone have. really pushed you yeah. to do it. Julia died. She was dying. <laughs> Mina party is always a favorite memory. Mr. Meenan parties I always really enjoy because there's like the one room where they play the piano and like, you know, they play guitar and they sing Irish songs. And that was like a huge part of my also experience. It was just yeah. getting the, Irish, the, the Irish influence from like Mr. Meenan and like, you know, Peterborough people and stuff. And um, Meenan has good parties. He should have more. Yeah, it's just the atmosphere there is really nice. Chasing one more light Through a land so wild and savage To make a northwest passage to the sea We came all this way But now comes the day To bid you farewell I just remember this um, it was at Meenan's, uh, which one did he have? Uh, Haggis? Oh, Robbie yeah. Burns. Robbie Burns, yeah. And there were people playing music, people smoking pipes and playing cards, people talking in the kitchen. Um, and it kind of just hits you, especially in third year. I think that's one thing with third year. You start to miss things. You realize that it's your last time doing all these things again with these people. Um, and I was with Safira and she had this expression on her face and I asked her what she was doing and she, she told me she was taking a mental shot of everything and yeah you just like look around and see how beautiful a party actually is. I would have been better off had I never gone to a party here. Not one. No. Not a single party. No, I like my, if I had to choose between go to all of them, go to none, I would choose go to none. But if you could, you'd go, you would have gone to some at least? The vast majority of the parties that I went to, I did bad things, which I have to, will have to suffer in purgatory for a long time for. So, and I just don't think that that's taken seriously around here. I think it's, there's a very flippant view of alcohol at this school, and people do really bad things with it, and they don't think twice. See, the one thing I liked about this place in my first year is that whenever you went to a party here, it wasn't just a... It wasn't just a typical high school party experience where you went to go drink and just talk to a few people while being secluded from everyone else in the same house. Right, yes. Yeah. Uh, however, nowadays, especially from last year and this year, it's, it's, it, that's what it's like. And it isn't, it isn't always fun. Parties, in my viewpoint, were party, you know, well, my, versions of parties with my friends was just literally just grabbing a couple beers, going down to the basement, watching a movie and drinking and laughing and that's it. Coming here and there's like people dancing and people were just breaking things and people were just screaming and yelling at each other. I was like, oh wow, this is kind of interesting. Until like, you know, the first time I actually experienced it was the, uh, <laughs> was the alumni back in first year, alumni weekend. Oh, sick. <laughs> when I was on the couch, drunk out of my mind, Saying, I don't even remember what I was saying, but whatever it was, I heard I was talking, actually, no, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, party experience in the about spot, they're very interesting. Mm -hmm. oh, Take a weekend. Me and Mira on this thing where um, we're not drinking, we're going to see who drinks first. You, all, you just had a beer. Oh, shit. I was like, <laughs> is it even done? 
Okay, it's done. Which I. <laughs> Dang it! Oh. Well, yeah. anyways, we were going to do the same. Well, you lost. Time. I don't know what you bet, <laughs> but you lost. We weren't even betting. We're just like we're just doing it for the good of our like. The party experience was more just about like drinking <laughs> in first year, uh, and then second year it was um, started shifting towards more like sure you had. There were times when we would still like I don't know make a lean to or something and then yeah. we'd drink, but it was very much like about maintaining the friendships. So the party experience was then developing more into like just hanging out, and then this year <coughs> finally it's like <coughs> weirdly enough it's almost like I've mastered mm -hmm. the art of going to a party. Yeah, because I've gone to parties this year when I was on painkillers or whatever for my leg, <laughs> and I wasn't drinking. But I still have a great time. Small. Having a smaller school has always benefited that kind of aspect of the school life because mm -hmm. it's not like you go to a party and like everyone's new. Mm -hmm. You go to a party and it's the same people you saw a few hours ago. <laughs> That's true. Except now it's almost like the whole people become different people when they're at a party. <laughs> oh, I'll ask it anyway. What's your number one best memory of your entire time? Huh. Number one best memory? What's your favorite, favorite moment? Probably paintballing. Paintballing. This year? Yeah. Honestly, that was, great. That that was, was probably, it was just a wholesome day, you know? That was a great Going out with the boys, getting muddy and dirty and sweaty and all that stuff and shooting other people and then <laughs> binging on McDonald's on the way back and then we actually threw a party that night too. We did. And that was one of the more solid parties. Like it was just chill. That that is an unfair question, but <laughs> I would have to say my favorite memory from this year mm -hmm. was um, after Compline. Uh, we were walking. All, so all the girls in our house went this year, and we were walking back. And I think it was right before we were gonna have a snowball fight with Fatima's. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I was walking back a little bit. I kind of separated myself. And they were all just in a row. It was snowing. And they were so... <laughs> they were just... Oh my gosh, a gift from... Like, oh, I... This has nothing to do with the fact that they're standing there. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I love you. Um, yeah, I loved that moment. They were all enjoying each other's company. They were bonding as a house and I think as an RA when you see that that is the one thing I prayed for this year yes. big group of people climbed up onto the the water tower hill yeah. I and we there. all were just drinking and having the time and that's probably like if I had to pick one moment at also that would probably be one of them because it was just like oh I just remember one point like sitting down and I was like on the rock and I just kind of was like looking around and there were people just like laughing and just like everyone was talking and just like drinking and just like having like such good time and everyone just looked so genuinely happy and I was just like ah yeah like I don't know it's just a moment of like mm -hmm. when you kind of felt like you kind of just stepped away from the crowd for a second yeah. and just saw them for what they were and everyone like it was just really cool yeah the only part that like actually I wouldn't regret it. it. was probably my favorite part is when I broke Sean's um, teapot, coffee pot, and uh, yeah, I got ripped on. But it was great. Nice. Like, it was like, I deserved it, and I was like, yeah, but it was for a cause. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Joe Kim's yeah. barbecue. Oh, that was last fun. year? That yeah. was last year? That was amazing. Yeah. It was so, I remember that with watched Marla and Angelique. Angelique. We just all went. Oh, oh right! That was funny. Which was not scary. Nope, I wasn't. It was, it was weird. But anyway, that was like, I don't know if you could call that a party, but it was amazing. Yeah. It was so much fun. It was the, I remember we barbecued pineapple. Oh. Mm. It was. Ooh. Yeah. Filming Star Child and Search Party would probably yeah. count as some of my favorite memories. Yeah. Was the end of second? Yeah, it was the end of second year. We all had that picnic outside down by the water. Oh, and we just gosh, played was... sports, we swam, we listened to music, we just sat there, we ate food, we drank, like, honestly, that was my most favorite memory of this place. <laughs> what are you going to miss most from Oldsville? I think years? I'm honestly going to miss 
the friends that I made here because we all came from different parts of Canada so it's like I'm gonna miss waking up and just going to campus and seeing you guys here because I'm gonna go because like we're all gonna go back home you know some of us came from the same provinces so we might see you know, the same people from the same province but we're not gonna have that you know waking up oh it's Monday let's go to campus it's hey Linda hey JD you know we're not gonna I like I won't have that anymore I won't I won't have a common place that I would always go to and I would see, you know, some of the best friends I've ever made. Just seeing people. I know we complained about, you know, seeing people every day, but at the same time, that's going to be one of the things I miss the most. Like, you just going anywhere in town, any store, there's always someone from the school there. And, yeah, I just, I'm going to miss that a lot. I don't know I'm going to miss it entirely, but I... I I enjoy being <laughs> challenged with the grade scheme and stuff like that and, and learning new things so um, I know I'm not going to continue or like further my academic education after this um, but I'm going to meet I'm going to miss being challenged in that aspect but it, like not enough to go back into it so that's people <laughs> no it's 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 just because it's in such a small town everything is right there all the time and and if you're just sitting there and you're like no, i'm having a really crappy day or you just want to share your happiness with someone you can they're just they're literally just a walk away and you're like hey let's have this great chat about me um being so enlightened from like these three words in a book i read and then you can have like three hour long conversations or you just want to just have a casual beer with someone or you know go to different like hockey games or yeah I'm gonna miss that. um there's a lot there's a lot like obviously yes the most prominent being the people that are here especially the people in my year just like got here together and went through everything and like the you know, leaving is just gonna be like really difficult really sad but like there's so much more it's like the church you know like mm -hmm. you're having a bad day or whatever like maybe you just have an exam and you need to say some prayers beforehand it's literally right there you have a question about anything like every professor is willing to talk to you about it if you wake up early like you go for a walk and you like meet the locals in the area and they're just like you can have some amazing conversations you like stay up late enough for early enough and watch like the sunrise and set and it's just there's no noise there's like yeah. quietness and peacefulness and I'm gonna miss that a lot because I don't think you can quite get that anywhere else yeah. I'm gonna miss Comfort. being in close proximity of all my really close friends. That's gonna be really sad. And then also, obviously, like some of the classes and the teachers were just like so good. Friends and teachers. Because also, like all the teachers yeah. really cared about the students and like they were like parents. Like, I'll miss like, the yeah. academic vitality. vitality. I'll miss that, um, yeah, just. I love all the like the intellectual, or like it seems like an intellectual hub. Like all the teachers are, uh, like, are just in a world of scholars. There's something so exciting about being part of that. Even if you don't feel like you are <laughs> a scholar, it's like you you get to be in it, and it's really exciting. It makes you feel like one for a little bit. Just the people. Yeah. The Bay a little <laughs> Okay, no, but I'm not laughing. I'm gonna miss the good winter to get to places. I'm gonna miss yeah. the snow. Yeah. I'm not gonna miss that at all. <laughs> like, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it looks nice, but it's annoying. <laughs> yeah, okay, in April. <laughs> um, I think Hedwig. I really yeah. love yeah. it. Like, it's a gem. It's so beautiful. Yeah, like the actual church, the music that goes with the church. <laughs> Not 11, but when the, the scholar sings, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Plus with the, but it's just yeah. such a good mm -hmm. atmosphere. It's, you know, they're really trying to be reverent, and I just love that. Um, I think the classes, that's mm. been a huge thing for me. I really love to learn, and I really love reading what we're reading. Um, and maybe just not having those, those lectures and that type of guidance through the intellect is going to be one thing I'll miss about. Mm -hmm. um, the communal aspect and just, I guess the network of friends is something. Yeah. And like, 
like, my, not like-minded, but like personality. Mm -hmm. It's only this year that I've made a couple friends that are more similar to myself, so that's useful. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> I, can, I can use that. I'm just kidding. Um, and yeah, the classes and the academic part of it. Like, mm -hmm. not everything is as hard as it should be, but like, yeah. And okay. the structure of classes. Julia. Um, yeah, I think both of those, I I made this like decision that like when I when I go out, I mean I don't wanna like lose that like search for knowledge. Um and I wanna like, you know, um but I'm gonna miss that. I'm gonna miss my friends a lot, like the community, Sunday brunches, stuff like that. Honestly? Moments like this. Just like sitting. Talking, yeah, drinking, <laughs> and it's like, sure, you have opportunities to do that, but you don't even want to do it in the context of this. No, no. it's not going to be looking back on this, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like the moment that we're in now kind of creates the context yeah. for what we're in now, you know. It's probably going to be, I don't know, yeah, it's a couple like, years from now, I'll be talking about this very moment. I'm actually going to miss the teachers so much. <laughs> it's going to be very, very sad. But... <laughs> the What I'll miss most is that you kind of show up to school and your day is like not a moment to be wasted. You, you like, your alone time is so precious. And when you're with people, you're, it's so it's such a big deal. This place is a second home away from home. I'll miss some of the people up here. I'll miss going to the interesting classes. I'll, I'll miss all the interesting quirks and characteristics that all the professors have up here. So I won't feel like I'm really missing them, but that I'll always be trying to incorporate all that I've learned from here and try to go on and move on with my life. With these thoughts, with these experiences, already. But how has this experience, three years at Oldswell, affected you as a person? It's given me my faith. It's given me my faith. Challenged me to, um, like look at life differently, and then it challenged me to look at myself differently. So there was a whole bunch of um, a whole bunch of things that I had to like get over, uh, and ultimately I had to get over myself, and so. Yeah, just growth and maturity, and I wouldn't give up these three years for me. Yeah, I could, I could sense I changed. In, in the beginning, I was like, not really expecting anything. I had low standards, but then after, I became really optimistic and really happy. <laughs> no, like, three also, it's like, you have, like, s like, I had so many, like, very, like, prominent issues, and they were so prominent, but, like, I was just so ignorant. I had no idea. And now three years here, the people here, like fellow classmates, the professors, like all the people that are running the scenes and everything, like it's, it like changes you like mm -hmm. a lot, like <laughs> kind of scary how quickly you can change in three years and how drastically because everybody like though like have the same qualities like everybody is just like so different and so much for the better it's amazing yeah. um i think it's made me more confident in myself because like this this is a place where i can like share every part of myself like faith and personality yeah. and everything and to have like like you can kind of depend on people here to be generous and mm -hmm. more gi giving than in some other places um, because like, you know, Monica said, you could be anywhere else, really. God gives you so much freedom. And the fact that you're here at this moment with these people um, will change you than being somewhere else. Um, so I think having these people around me made me want to be a better person myself. I kind of came here as like either a miracle or just very <laughs> providential. Um, but I think I really grew a lot um, in every single aspect of my character and my person. Uh, I really, I think, found like not even just an identity, but um, 
really found out and really grew into the person that I am today yeah. and the person that I'll be next week, next month, next year. Um, I think it's all, it's really helped me just grow in every way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I like think and be like, what would I be like if I hadn't mm -hmm. come here? And um, I pro I'm sure I'd be Catholic, but I there's so much I've learned. And like, mm -hmm. I love it because like, I'll go home for break and I'll talk to people and I'm like, and I'm able to pull all this stuff. Like, I know what St. Augustine thinks, and I know um, about the seven mansions of the soul, and like, and it helps you understand people a lot better. And I just, I remember John Espadero talking about his experience as an alumni, and it just made me so, like, happy that I came here, because he was just talking about everything that this, because sometimes you're like, you're in this bubble, and you feel like once it's over, it's like it never happened. But he was like, it's like also is always part of you. It's always going to be a part of your life. And it for a lot of people, it's one of the most important parts of their life. And I think it will be for me. A I've learned of, to love them all. <laughs> uh, no, a lot over of people time. have changed so much I over think. the past. I think we've all like, we've all want, we all really wanted to like be friends. We all wanted to like have a close bond, which we did. But we learned that we had to like, in order to have healthy like, I think bonds with people like we needed to overcome certain yeah. things with ourselves and stuff like that. So I think like a lot of maturing and growth. Like I've seen people who like, you know, only stay one year, and um, it's and they said you know that one year was been a life changer for me. This no, I think the beautiful thing about something that's healthy, if I can get all philosophical on you, something that's healthy changes nonstop. And that's the difference between us is because I literally hate change. I'm like a 90 year old man when it comes to it. If like s my friends start dating or something, I will hate it for the longest time. And it's like, no. Uh, what advice would you guys give to future students? Don't skip class. That's that's okay. That is sound okay. sage wisdom. Yeah. It do not take advantage of the clubs at the school. I should have joined yeah. movie club. I He's an art club. That's amazing. I was gonna say I, I recently joined art club. I've done some pretty good work. I mean, it's not like it's not I've like seen them. that good, good, but yeah, I mean. Like Leandra and Monica are way better. Get involved, I think. Yeah. Because I didn't really get involved in my first year, and then I did in my more so in my second, and that's when I started really having fun. Mm -hmm. And hang out at the school, you know? Like, mm -hmm. do some studying at the school too, not just in your house. Yeah. Because I was, like, in my house a lot. and But then you really get a different crowd when yeah, you're it's true. school. Crazy yeah. stuff happens at the school yeah. too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, another big thing is, like, not stress. Yeah. Just well, take yeah. it and take it and take it. Yeah, it helps with that. Yeah. That helps with the sleeping and the eating patterns. The not being, just leaving things last minute. Don't overload. <laughs> not without a good reason. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. Like, just, you know, there's the academics, there's like, you know, other things that you need to do, but like, you're young. And these are gonna be some of like the most fun years of your life as like in your youth anyway. Um, and it's best just to like have fun now and just spend time with like just like the social dynamics of the school is so important to its identity and just like to be open and willing to be changed. Like to figure out how to find a balance. Because if your nose is in the book too much, you're going to miss out on a lot of experiences with a lot of amazing people. However, if your books aren't in the nose enough, you're gonna have to pull an Emily <laughs> and redo some courses. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Find a balance, yeah. Find a balance between like having fun, but also getting your stuff done. But also, I think 
I think it's almost more important to make sure that you're making memories than it is to make sure you're getting good grades because yeah. looking at it, it's like who who do you like hear with all these insane stories like from like past um, students here coming back and like telling all these crazy stories and like some of them just have so many it's because they like made every minute count and sure they're like well you know what I didn't even get cum laude like I got a 69 average or whatever but then they come out and they're like way better for it you know because they lived and then there's some people and they're like you know what I got the best grades that else was ever seen I'm basically St. Thomas 2.0 and <laughs> but then you like try to talk to them and it's like oh like what are some crazy things that happened in your year and like they don't have them mm -hmm. like first years are far too oh, serious yeah. so like exams and stuff exams so you don't exam. need you don't need to worry about it and like friendships and like I think a similar mistake people make in first year is thinking is categorizing people to such an extent that they limit the friendships that they could have and so I yeah. guess that's something that you kind of have to come to terms with yeah. being here for three years that you'll be friends with people that you never would have been friends with in first year so I think you're in a better place as a first year if you approach I guess open mind. well if you approach friendships in a more open-minded way without um, categorizing people mm -hmm. Be open to things, and then, you know, you you will you will if you are if you act yourself, you'll find people that are like-minded, and you'll end up, you know, hanging out with people you want to hang out with. If you try and like create an image of something that you're not, then mm -hmm. you're gonna end up being with people you don't like being with. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, I hate using the term, but like be yourself. <laughs> Yeah, I hate that. Be original. <laughs> be who you truly are. But, yeah, like, just be, be confident. You know, go drink on a hill. You know, talk about life and, you know, like, there's plenty of philosophy courses we all take. Just contemplate the forms a little bit. Sometimes you get to learn and stumble across new fun ideas. So. Ah, just like that. It's perfect. Awesome. And uh, what would you like to say to the school after all these years? Stay classy, San Diego. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll say uh, thanks for the opportunity for helping me get to know myself, you know, better than I knew myself before. You know? Don't change too much. No. What's your, uh, the ideals that founded the school are the things that kind of drive it forward. So, stay classy. Well, I'd like to say thank you. I'd say thank you, Olswa, for not kicking me out in first year. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm glad you for uh, I don't know. There's so much to say that you can't <clears throat> really just just sort of thank you. Like everyone who's a part of the school has made a major impact on my life. Like I don't know. I think. Thank you, <laughs> like a hundred times over, for all that has happened, for the education, for all the sacrifice that the teachers do, and yeah, definitely for the teachers, for all the good times that we've had <laughs> with friends and stuff, and giving us the opportunity to really develop that. So, yeah. uh, I just want to say thank you for loving us at our worst even though we were difficult yeah. and we didn't always like show the gratitude or the respect that you thoroughly deserve and just loving us through all these years and caring about mm -hmm. us and forming us into who we are now so that we can be successful mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Quint. I'd say the same thing. You're gonna be in my prayers for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, I'll never forget. Thank you for your work. Yeah. Um, and I'm um, definitely going to persuade my kids to come here. Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. yeah. No, it's been the experience of a lifetime. And yeah, I'm going to cry. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> oh, let's no. get a little lug. No, oh, no. I don't think I can lug. <laughs> oh, oh, wow, I feel tears. Okay, this is I know. <laughs> what is going um, on? Thank you. Thank you for 
um, helping to shape who I am and who I will become. And I can't look directly into the lens because it's so it's sad, actually like, but um, <laughs> I, I guess there's nothing else that I can really say. But thank you, good luck, and goodbye. Thanks for uh, helping me. Like, thank you, like, yeah. a million times. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it has been life changing. Yeah. And we're gonna miss it. Yeah, yeah. We are going to miss this place. Yeah. Thanks a million. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think you've really. Uh, thanks, affected. guys. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's awesome. You really helped me yeah. grow and become a better person and yeah. give me the things that I need to uh, continue to grow. Um, and Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that's not saying very much, but I think it also is saying everything because the, the school, all the aspects of the school have changed me a lot for the better. Uh, I won't be the same as I was before. And and I'm very grateful for that because I've really been given a clearer idea of what life actually is through being at this school. So thank you very much. Closing time Every new beginning comes from some other beginnings and